Hello, in this video we're going to derive the mean and the variance of a gamma distribution. And uh, a gamma distribution has a, has a density like this where the gamma function here is defined as this integral. And I would suggest if, if you're unfamiliar with it to go to my video called properties of a gamma function to find more details about that. Here the alpha and beta are always positive and our domain is x greater than zero. First of all, we want to know is it a PDF? So let's, let's check that. So we're going to integrate this over the domain, which is this. Now we can pull these out because they're not, uh, they're, there's no x's in them, they're constants. <clears throat> now let's do a substitution of x equals beta y. So then dx is equal to beta y, and we plug that back in to our equation. So here we're just left with e to the minus y, and here we're left with uh, beta y raised to the alpha minus 1 power. And this is our uh, dx. So now when we look at this, we have beta raised to the alpha minus 1 plus that, so it's beta to the alpha, but so that cancels with this, and then we're left with y raised to the alpha minus one, which is this. Well, this piece right here is, is how we defined gamma, the gamma function. So this is uh, gamma of alpha divided by gamma of alpha, which is one, so it is a PDF. Now let's look at the mean. The mean is the expected value of x, so we plug in an x times the density, and um, we can take that value in here, and we and that's what this is. Now, one thing we try to do is in in statistics is to make an integral look like a PDF because we know it integrates to one. So here, the new parameter, let's call it uh, alpha plus one. So that means we need beta to the alpha plus one, but we need a, if we divide it by the beta, we need to multiply it. And then here was gamma of alpha, but we need gamma of alpha plus one. So then we have to cancel that out with multiplying by alpha. So what we've done is multiplied by a well-chosen one. But we do that because then this piece is one leaving just alpha times beta, and that's the mean of a gamma function. Um, now let's look at the second moment, which is defined as the expected value of x squared. So we stick in an x squared here, and then we, then we, bring, it, then we bring those two together, so alpha plus 2 minus 1. And then again, we trick this into looking like a PDF, so we multiply and divide by beta squared, and then we multiply and divide by alpha times alpha plus one. And then we do that because then this bottom half is a, is a PDF and it integrates to one, leaving alpha times alpha plus one times beta squared. Now we use that when we calculate the variance of a function. So the variance is defined by this, and we just calculated the second moment we calculated the first moment, or the mean, earlier, so we plug those values in. And now we do algebra, so over here we get this, and that comes down. Well, those two pieces cancel, leaving just alpha times beta squared, and that's the uh, variance of a gamma function. So that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like the video if you did, and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.